everyone. My name is Charlotte Gonzalez and I'm a language arts teacher in Fairfax County. Uh, like you, I've been working on my nonfiction piece for writing and um, mine happens to be focused on the violin. Um, I'm noticing though that as I'm writing, there are some times when I think I might need to elaborate more on what I'm saying, saying so that I can teach my reader a little bit more information. I'm going to share with you uh, some steps that you can take in order to find places that you can develop a bit more. So writers try out different elaboration techniques to develop their facts. First, you'll want to reread your piece. Then find a fact that is by itself. It just kind of hangs out there by itself. There's not a lot of other explanation. Then try different elaboration techniques out loud to find one that works. Let me show you what I mean by that. So in my piece, I noticed I'd been writing about um, holding the violin, what that looks like, how to do it, and I saw this one line that said, your chin goes on the chin rest. And that's all I said. But I'm thinking maybe my reader needs to know a little bit more. So I tried out several ways. Here, there are six different ways. You might try some of them, some of them might not work, but try a few and see which one feels like it will work the best. Let me show you what I mean. One way that you can elaborate a fact is to describe what it looks like. So my fact is your chin goes in the violin's chin rest. All right, well, what does that really look like? Maybe I could say something like this. The chin rest is the small curved piece attached to the bottom left side of the violin. That would describe a little more about what that looks like and where it's placed on the violin. Another way is that I could give an example. So here's, this one didn't feel the best for me, but I tried it out anyway. Um, here's what I came up with. Chin rests come in different shapes, so find one that fits you best. Mm. For me, this given example didn't really fit as well, but that's okay. I'm gonna try out another way, which is I could define what that chin rest is, so define it. The chin rest is a shaped piece of wood or plastic to help position the player's chin and jaw. Huh. That one? might offer a little more information and detail to the person reading it. Number four, I could say what the thing is not. So I could go about saying the chin rest is not a part that produces sound. That could be helpful information too. I could use another technique which is to describe or use, describe its use or its function. So I could say it something like this. The chin rest provides comfort and helps the violinist hold the instrument up while playing. Huh. That says what its function is, its purpose in being on the violin itself, why it's there, what it's for. The last type of elaboration I could try is to describe the parts of. So this is what I mean. I could say something like, the chin rest has two main parts. The chin cup sits on top of the violin and the clips hold the chin rest onto the edges. So it really depends on what I choose um, related to what I want my reader to understand. For me, thinking about the beginning violin player, when I say your chin goes in the violin's chin rest, I'm thinking maybe I need to say what it is. So maybe defining the chin rest or and talking about the use and function, maybe even those two together would help my reader understand more about what I mean about the chin rest and why we use it on the violin. So for you, reread your piece. Find that fact that kind of stands alone and then maybe try out some different elaboration techniques. Say them out loud. 
Think about which one is going to fit your purpose and your reader the best. And you might even consider combining one or two. So have a go, have fun trying it out, and we'll see you next time.